Hello everybody, I am the Programming Honor and this is my first ever video. Please, please hold your applause, I assure you that this is nothing too cool. I'm just going to be showing you guys how to make some programs in the language C++. So go ahead and open up your web browser and go to the search bar of Google or Bing or whatever you use and go ahead and search Code Blocks. Code Blocks is a IDE, so it will build in C, C++, and Fortran. We're going to be working in C++ only for now. Go ahead and go to Downloads, and download the binary release. Now, you're going to need to choose your operating system, and then under your operating system you have all these different things for your different operating system, all these different links and versions and stuff, but I have Windows, so I'm going to be working with the Windows 2000 XP Vista 7. Now, they don't have a Windows 8 version, but I am currently running Windows 8, as you can see, and um, I don't have any problems with it whatsoever. I haven't had any crashes, any problems building or running or anything, so... I'm, I'm sure it'll work for you guys too if you're running Windows 8. So, under these three files, you have code blocks setup.exe, code blocks mingw.exe, and then the same thing tdm gcc. What you would need to do is you need to download code blocks 13.12 mingw setup.exe. It doesn't matter if you want to use Burl, iOS, or SourceForge. Either way, you're going to get the right program and go ahead and run that and set it up. After you do that, you're going to want to open the program, of course, and it will pop up with this initially while it's loading. And then it will open this Start Here tab. So, within code blocks, you have of course, create a project, open, tip of the day. You can visit their forums, report a bug, or request a new feature. I have all these recent projects. Just go ahead and ignore those. We're going to be creating a new project. When you go to create a new project, there are tons of different projects you can choose from. Anything from Win32, Tricore, Ogre, there's everything. So, And a lot of it's pretty advanced stuff that we're not going to get to yet so we're going to start off nice and simple with console application go ahead and click console application and click go it will bring up this little setup wizard and you just go through just hit next and then choose your language we're going to be uh, coding in C++ today and uh, name your project so we're just going to call it hello world I'm going to call it Hello World 3 because I have multiple other Hello Worlds from different little test things. So go ahead and name it Hello World and then hit Next. Um, it'll ask you what compiler you want to use. And uh, it should pop up by default the GNU GCC compiler. Go ahead and use that. Um, don't forget to create a debug configuration and release configuration this entire window should pretty much be default so you shouldn't have to mess with anything once you click finish you will see that you have over here on the left workspace you have your project which is hello world and then you have the sources within the project so go ahead and open up, open up the sources and you see should see main cpp so you open up that cpp file and this is what it gives you this is the file that is default if you build and run that, it brings up this command prompt and it says hello world. And that is it. So pretty much the parts of this include the IO stream, it includes the using the namespace std, it includes int main, and then has a function C out and line and return zero. What include is Include IO stream is a header. When you define a header or include a header, you want to use, well, you have to use hashtag or hash um, include 
whatever. So just include IO stream with those uh, pointy brackets there. Um, that includes input output stream. So IO stream is for input and output to the console. The namespace std is actually standard. The standard namespace includes um, everything from C in, C out, end line, string. So the int main is pretty much the body of the program. Everything that is going to be executed will be within int main. Now, within int main, we have C out, hello world and L semicolon. Now this is pretty much console out hello world. It will print hello world and then it will end line. Now console out will pretty much be anything that is printed on the console. So hello world, you can see that it is there and hello world is right there. Um, and line will end the line. So if I have that right there and I want to have another hello world, I will just type out hello world and then end that line as well. Now, without the end line, there it would not go to the next line to print that second hello world. So if I just ended this, then it'll just be hello world, and then right after it, it will also be hello world again. And I can add a space within the first hello world, the that, and then it will, of course, have a space after it. But end line is very important. Now the semicolon pretty much means that it is ending that statement. So when this statement ends, it will move on to the next. So without the semicolon, it will return, when you build it, it will return an error. And it says expecting semicolon before C out. So it is expecting a semicolon before this C out in particular. So you look back at that last line. Oh, you're missing a semicolon. There you go. Return zero pretty much will end the program. It will cut it off. It will and everything so that's what return zero is now what we're going to do is we're going to define some variables for an input now because we only have output we're not going to mess with that too much but we're going to need c in and we're going to need the other arrow facing the opposite direction and instead of putting something inside quotes you can't do that with input. So C in, you're going to put anything from num for number. You can put in number. You can have uh, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, whatever. But we're just going to stick with A. Now, C in does not work with end line. If you try to run it with end line, it's, well, first we have to declare A. So, a can be anything from an int, which we're going to use now, but um, it can also be a car, which stands for character, which is a single character. So instead of a word like hello, it's going to be H. So if you typed in hello, it would return or it would output H. Um, uh, integers is, are um, any whole number above zero. So no negatives, no decimals, nothing like that. So, so we have characters, ints, which by the way, if you can figure it out, ints are integers, which I guess I spelled that wrong. I don't know. Okay, so you have 
car, you have int, you have float, which is uh, positive and negative, I think, and it also includes decimals. Um, after float, you have short, long, um, uh, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, other variables that aren't really used very often. So, now that we've defined A, um, we are now going to output A. So, we're going to need another C out, and this time, instead of including anything in brackets, we're just going to put A. And then we're going to end the line. So, when you build and run that, there was a problem. End line, I yell yes, I'm saying how it doesn't work, so... When it's CN, do not have an end line. It will not build and run. So go ahead and build and run that. And now you have hello world. And you can see it did not pop up. Uh, return zero, process, and whatever. So now it has this little flashing underscore there. That's beautiful. Hello, little fella. Um, now you're going to have to input something here. So... You can put input anything from 1 to 999. Yep. So, now you can input numbers, any number, but you cannot input letters. Any letter or special character, anything that's not a numeric value, will return 0 instead because. It's looking for an integer, and if it's not an integer, it will return zero, which is kind of a computing term for false. If we wanted to change int a, we could change it to car. So then we can type a letter. So k will return k. We can you can type a word if you want, but problem is it will only return the first character of the word or phrase that you've typed in. So, hello world will return H instead of hello world. Um, next episode we'll be uh, building a calculator with input and output and other different uh, fancy things and then we'll use float for that so that we can get good old decimals. But, uh, yeah. And that, my friends, is very basic input-output. Next episode, I will be expanding on everything that I've talked today, and um, we're going to be building some more with it.